Mr. Anderson is starting tonight. Um, can you maybe just uh, describe what um, conversations were like with him in the headspace that uh, you sense he's in and it's nice to have him back? Well, it's terrific to have him back, um, you know, as a person, first of all, a uh, member of our group, but, you know, as a goaltender, uh, you know, he's a, he's a terrific number one goalie. He's, you know, with, uh, he's got a 4-1 record this year, with five games played. So, obviously, he's a gigantic part of our team. So, uh, right now, it's uh, to have him back is, uh, is huge for us. But the way, the way he's, he's uh, he showed focus right now is pretty impressive. Uh, and for him, it has to be all about hockey right now because he wants to make sure that he's focused, and uh, that's exactly what he was this morning. How tough is that to do? You know, when, you know, is this kind of an experience? Listen, I, I'd love to tell you that I know. I, I mean, uh, I guess it's one of those situations, and unless you live it, uh, you know, at the age he's got and the situation he's got, the family and everybody, I don't think anybody. Uh, could know how hard that is uh, to do, but one thing's for sure, he's, a, he's an individual with a great character and that's why he's here now and uh, he's a battler and uh, he's definitely shown that by, by yeah. showing up here and his family, um, uh, you know, allowing him to come down here, so it's, it, it shows a lot about his character. Oh, we talked hockey. We talked hockey. That's, uh, he wants he wants to talk about hockey right now. That's it. That's all he wants to be focused. And so I think the other the other talks were, were made uh, in the previous days. So I think um, f for for him now, what's important for, is to come here and uh, put his his best game on the ice. And to do that, he needs focus. Did you get a sense his presence has uh, boosted the energy of your hockey team? Not that it maybe needs it, but no. You know the the thing is we we can't change the way we play. I think we've played really two good games. We deserve the last game. Uh, so he's coming here to, to basically stop puck. So we want to make sure that uh, the focus is very, um, very precise. Like he, we're not changing things because our goalie's coming. We're just very confident that he, you know he does the job because he he's done the job so many times now. Uh, so we're confident to have him back there, and we're confident about how we play. So it, it's uh, we can't make it uh, this you know this uh, an element that changes everything we do. It just it solidifies what we do. And uh, definitely, and in that respect, I think it, it makes it um, a very narrow focus. That's what we want. Écoutez, les émotions, il faut, faut faire attention aux émotions. Tu vois, on vient de jouer deux matchs où on est sorti en Lyon, où on a, eu, on a outshooté l'autre équipe, euh, outchancé l'autre équipe de beaucoup, puis avec euh, beaucoup de lancers pour, puis très peu de lancers contre. Alors, je, on ne veut pas rien changer de ça. C'est ça le danger, de commencer à sortir et euh, faire quelque chose de nouveau, comme je viens de dire en anglais. C'est de garder ce qu'on a fait les deux derniers matchs. C'était assez pour gagner deux matchs. On n'a pas gagné le deuxième, mais il faut faire attention pour justement s'éloigner. On, on méritait largement le dernier match. Alors, on veut, ne on veut pas changer tout ce qu'on fait. On veut juste entourer notre gardien de but avec, comme on a fait les deux derniers matchs, en donnant très peu de lancers, très peu de, de, de chances de marquer l'adversaire. T'es confiant que... Avec l'expérience qu'il y a, les équipes qui vont être capables de construire oh, oui, ce oui, c'est pas juste l'expérience, c'est le caractère. Mais tu sais, il a quand même manqué plusieurs jours. Là. Euh, euh, je pense que c'est pas, pas, pas de la magie. On joue contre une équipe qui, qui vient de gagner, euh, qui est 7-1. Alors c'est sûr qu'on prend la main le plus gros challenge jusqu'à maintenant. Si on compare ça, probablement à Tempa. Euh, c'est le genre de challenge là aujourd'hui. From them, oh. well, it's very simple. Uh, Talbot's on fire, uh, and uh, McDavid is just—you know—you can't, you can't let him skate. I mean, he'll go right through you. So it's a, you've got a generational player uh, that's transformed this organization, I think. And uh, and you know, the, the way Talbot has played has solidified their defensive game. So it, it gives them what they've got right now. They're playing real well. They look very confident on the video. Uh, and that's why they, you know, they're seven and one. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a very big challenge for us. Uh, we've played well, so we, we, we want to be able to match them. You're not making any other changes. Sorry. You're not making any no, other changes. No, no, no. Just a goaltending. Do you think you're hitting a point here with Shabbat where we're not thinking about that today? He's not playing, and we'll think about that tomorrow. Some of your players were very complimentary about your feedback <coughs> process. That you're in the room all the time talking to them. You you make a point to bringing five or six guys in every day to talk to them about their last game or, or going forward. Why is that uh, an important well, aspect of your coaching? Well, uh, you know, I basically I I guess I gone up the ranks uh, being me, and uh, me is two things. First of all, offense was always 
my thing. That's why I was chosen by Hockey Canada uh, almost every time, and I've taken care of forwards uh, and power play. Uh, but the other side, which is probably the most important side, is uh, is taking care of individuals, people first. Psychology. For me, it's not. It, yeah, well, I, I, psychology thing I think is just a. I already had in mind. It was all about caring about people and managing individuals, and before players and before the team. Uh, so I just went back and got some tools to to try to uh, help my way of doing things. I, I believe that if I have 25 players, I need 25 ways to coach. I've always thought that. So uh, that that's why it takes time to get to know people. Uh, uh, I don't believe in motivating people. I believe in activating something that already exists. So I got to find out what exists there, what's their background, uh, where they're from, what kind of parents, what kind of siblings, and what kind of coaches they've liked and disliked, and, and uh, what kind of adversity they've gone through, and so on. So at that, at, once you've got that, then you're, 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 you're actually tapping into individuals, because these guys are not machines, they're people. And, uh, and from there, then, I, then we build relationships. So for me, there's an order to things. Take care of the person. Uh, manage the individual, then manage relationships, then manage chemistry, and then leadership. Then everything else after is, is important. The X's and O's are way after that for me. So that's why when I got the staff right now, I plan my staff in terms of ratio, just like a teacher. If you got one teacher for 30 kids, it's not the same thing as one teacher for 15 kids. So we want to have a, a good ratio of player coach and guys who are good one-on-one. -on -one. My whole philosophy is based on one-on-one. -on -one. So I certainly have to represent that. So I don't know if that re answers your question, but so that's that's the way. I, yeah, that's the way I like to coach, and uh, yeah, I spend tons of time one on one. So I'll do that uh, in the morning here. We'll bring guys at the hotel uh, uh, on a little table, uh, video, no video, uh, get clips from or, or quotes from people, athletes, leaders, and just try to do a good job one on one, trying to figure them up.